Hey, what's up, guys? Devil Dog Gamer here, bringing you another Marine Corps Mondays. So, yeah, I've been getting a lot of feedback uh, from you guys saying you love this, you know, that you love this little series I'm doing. Getting a lot of people who want to join the Marines or former Marines saying they love the stories. So, I'm happy about that. I like doing this, you know, spreading my stories, you know, ever getting everybody's opinion, let you know the dark side or the funny side of the Marines. But yeah, um, subscribers are going up a little bit. Uh, I would like to get a little more subscribers, so if you got some friends, you know, who would like the stories, you know, pass on the word. Send them a link to the channel, you know, send them on over. Maybe they'll enjoy it. But anyways, I'm playing some uh, Domination on Fallen. I go like 65-14 in this round. Uh, Modern Warfare 3, not my favorite game, but I'll still play it for, you know, rainy days. But yeah, I got a pretty epic kill cam on this. But um, I was going to do, I was debating on what, what I wanted to talk about today. Um, I do want to do a video. Uh, Marine Corps Mondays where I talk about why I joined the Marines and what reasoning and you know why people should join the Marines and for what reasons to uh, you know be successful and actually enjoy their time so I don't I'm probably gonna do that next week because I get a lot of people who you know message me right now who you want to join the Marines and you know aren't sure about it or you know aren't sure what to expect so I'm gonna do a video on you know for what reasons you should pick it over another branch of service and you know to be successful and actually enjoy it because there's a lot of there's a lot of reasons people join and you know they end up not liking it and you should you should go for all the right reasons to enjoy it. Alright anyways the story I'm gonna bring you today is from another boot camp story of course because that's when all the fun stuff happens and um so the story involves a kid named Benitez. I don't remember his first name, his last name is Benitez. If you know a kid last name Benitez it's probably him if he was in the Marines but um this kid was a shithead he always was screwing up, getting us in trouble, all kinds of stuff. And, it, you know, he was one of those guys that you, every time you heard his name, you're like, crap, we're getting screwed for this one. So, anyways, when you go to the uh, rifle range on Paris Island, you have to move barracks. And it's across the other side of the island, you know. So you pack up all your shit, and you have to do a hike. And uh, hikes are pretty much humps, whatever you want to call them, forced marches. It's pretty much you grab all your combat gear, and you're moving in formation with it and it's not a walk it's the point you know the point where you're at jog like you're walking fast walk and you're like pretty much at right at that point where if you were going to go any faster you would actually have to run or jog that's the point that's how fast you move the entire time so you're carrying like 150 180 pounds of gear and you're you're moving and the drill structures are on your butt and it's like 100 degrees outside and this goes on i, I believe the you know the hike out to the rifle range is about 10, 15 miles. The island isn't that big, but what they like to do is they take you, you know, in circles, kind of around different trails to kind of make it longer and whatnot. And they keep you in formation, they keep you going, and you get the slinky effect, which is pretty much where the front slows down a bit and everybody bunches up, and then the people in the front of the formation, you know, they speed up, and everybody in the rear ends up having to freaking double time it to catch up. So if you're in the back during one of these formations and force marches, you're pretty screwed because you're going to be constantly going back and forth. And since my last name was S, we'd usually do it alphabetically. Um, I'd get stuck in the rear, and I was always having a hard time. And humps, they get worse. Uh, I mean, uh, my unit, every Friday, we would have had to do a 40-mile hike. And we get a break every 10 miles for about 5, 10 minutes. And... If you fell out, pretty much what happened with falling out is you get to the rear and pretty much one of the docks decides you can't do it anymore and you get put in the vehicle. Well, our first sergeant was an asshole. So anybody who fell out of these hikes couldn't get their weekend liberty. So pretty much every Friday you were fighting to get your weekend. And I mean, 40 miles is a long way carrying all your combat gear, your weapon, the mortar crews would have to carry their mortars, you know, machine gunners would be carrying their 240s. It got pretty bad, and you know, that was one of the worst things you have to do there in the Marines. I didn't like it. A lot of people don't like it, and, it, and you know, it led to my bad knees and, you know, other problems in the future. But anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. So, we had to hike out there, and it's a, it's 100 degrees. So we got all our stuff, drill instructors are fucking with us, you know. If you're slowing down, what they do is they take a 50 cal ammo can they have filled with sand, they'll stop you strap it to the back of your Alice pack and you have to carry that extra 50 pounds the whole way and it sucks it's not fun 
So anyways, uh, I forget the guy's name I was stand I was with. And, you know, you can get away with talking on those things because everybody's breathing all hard and they're, you know, they're shouting and yelling. So me and him are talking and we're halfway through the hike and about, you know, halfway through and we're smelling something. It smells terrible. I'm like, what the hell is that smell? So we think nothing of it. We kind of joke about it saying, you know, you know, it's probably somebody puking or something stupid. So we finally get to the barracks. Everybody drops their bags. We're standing on line. Drone searcher's telling us what to do and whatnot. And this kid, Benitez, all of a sudden, he's like, Sir, you know, request permission. And the drone searcher's like, What the fuck do you want? He's like, Sir, permission to go use the head. And he's like, No, fuck you. And he's like, Sir, this recruit shit himself. We're all like, What the fuck? The drone searcher's like, You gotta be fucking kidding me. The kid fucking shit himself in the middle of the goddamn hike. I'm like, So that's what we were smelling. And like, as he's walking, so they told him to go jump in the shower, you know, pretty much just hop in the shower. As he's walking, there's a fucking trail of shit just fucking coming out of his pants. Everyone's like, oh, fuck. So they made us all clean it up, which wasn't pretty. So he showers. Now, every, you know, I forget when they did the laundry, but what you do for laundry is you, there's this big burlap sack. And... You pretty much got 80 guys in your platoon, so you can imagine how big the sack is. They put all the camis in the sack and, you know, safety pin it, and then you have to drag it down, they throw it in a van, and they, you know, take it to the laundry. Well, all of our pants, uh, all our cami bottoms, what we'd have is our back pocket, we'd have our mouth guards for when we do, you know, martial arts or anything that involved a mouth guards, so you'd always have it on you. So... A few people forget them, you know, it's in your back pocket, you really use it, so a lot of people forget about it. So later that night, you know, and everybody threw their stuff their stuff in there, you know, in the bags. It was already taken care of. They're waiting to get taken down. So later that night, a few it was about four or five of us, you remembered that we had our mouth guards in our pants. We're like, oh shit. So we, you know, tell the drone instructor, drone instructor's yelling at us, tell us to go get them. So you can imagine eighty pairs of camis. Is pretty much thrown in this bag, trying to find your pair of camis. It's ridiculous. So we're digging through, just grabbing random camis, looking at the name tapes, you know, seeing who's who's. We're digging, we're digging. I find mine, get my mouth guard, throw on my back, and all of a sudden, this guy just has his hand in there. He's like, "Oh my god!" And we're like, "What?" He's like, "I think I found Benitez's pants." And we're like, "Oh fuck!" And he pulls his hand out, and it's just covered in shit. And he instantly starts just fucking gagging and puking, and just like screaming. He's so pissed off. He's, he wanted to go punch his kid in the face. He was so fucking pissed. So he's in there showering, washing his hand. And we're laughing our asses off, cause I mean, like, he stuck his hand in shit. And like this shithead. I mean, if like I understand, yeah, you get sick, you know, it's hot, and you gotta shit your pants. But honestly, I would rather just fall out of the hike, fucking rip my pants down, and just shit on the side of the road, then shit in my own pants. That's ridiculous. Like, yeah, we all pissed our pants every once in a while when we were in boot camp and stuff, but shitting your pants is a whole different ball game, because now, you're, you know, you're affecting everybody else, you know, we gotta deal with the smell, your shitty pants, you know, you're wasting time, because now you gotta go shower and shit. So, I mean, it was one of those deals where, you know, the guys are sitting there, can't even believe it. Hands in there covered in shit. And he would have thought that would have made him throw his pants, you know, his camis away. Or, you know, like put him in a separate bag, but no, I had to go in the same stuff. So I can only imagine, like, the people at the laundromat, like, <laughs> pulling these camis out and this one's just covered in shit. And they're like, oh, I hate my life. Yeah, but anyways, that was a short little story. Uh, I'm gonna probably go in more on the hikes because the hikes actually led to a lot of medical problems with my knees and whatnot. So, I mean, like, I'm probably going to go into detail about them and, you know, what to expect for the people who are going in so they don't end up with the same problems I got, I have, and, you know, I'm dealing with right now. But, yeah, you know, continue to support. I love doing these videos. I got plenty of stories. I'm not going to run out anytime soon. And, you know, pass the word on. I want to get some more subscribers, you know, get some more people to listen to what I have to say and my stories. And, you know, enjoy what I, you know, I talk about. Because any knowledge that I can pass on to somebody who's going to be, you know, in the military or, you know, thinking of joining the military and doesn't really know what branch. And if I'm, you know, that's, if one of my stories or something I say is one of the deciding factors on somebody joining the Marines or not, you know, I feel, I feel pretty good about that. 
because I, I don't like seeing people join the Marines and hate it because they didn't know what to expect and, you know, it wasn't a cup of tea. There's nothing wrong with joining another branch, you know, as long as it's not the Chair Force. Chair Force is just lame. No offense, I mean, lame it's the Air Force, but it's lame. If you're not a pilot, it's lame. But yeah, the Marines, it, it's hardcore. It's not everybody's cup of tea, you know. As you can tell by these stories, it's usually pretty crazy. But yeah, I'm I'm probably gonna get to the point. I'm trying to do my Marine Corps Mondays right now to where I kind of go from boot camp to SOI to you know my time in the fleet to deployments. I'm gonna say that for last because my deployments are kind of a, a touchy subject because when I was over there, it was really you know it was one it wasn't a quiet time. It was pretty much just ambush, firefights, left and right. You know, I couldn't do anything, and so I kind of. I'm gonna save that for last, but you know, if you hang in there at the series, you know, you'll get to hear some of my deployment stories and you know, a little bit more from the fleet. Yeah, here's my little epic jump shot, which turns into my epic jump shot kill cam. <laughs> These guys were noobs. This Type 95 is actually a really OP weapon. But yeah, guys, make sure you uh, like my video, comment, you know, don't be afraid to send me messages. Check out my Facebook too, I'm usually uploading stuff on there. Alright, guys, until next Monday.